Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing two things in one video. So first of all, I'm going to be updating you on my progress of Booktube Rereadathon 2019, and then I'm going to let you know what I'll be reading for the 2020 prompts. So I know there are a couple of different Rereadathons. This is organised by Alex Black, it was originally organised by Catalyst Reads. And yeah, this is the third year it's been going, so I participated when Catalyst Reads did it in the first year. I'll link below actually to my wrap-up and TBR for this year if you want to check that out. And then, again, I participated in 2019 and will be participating again in 2020. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to recap uh, th what I did, how well I did in 2019. And then I will let you know what I'm going to be reading in 2020. In 2019, obviously there's one book a month. I didn't get to all of them, I did seven of them. So the first one was The Mask Mutant by R.L. Stein, which is one of my favourite Goosebumps books. It did hold up really well via the reread. I should point out as well, I always reread via audiobook. And so, um, yeah, it was an interesting experience to reread it via audio. It was actually a really well presented audiobook. Some of the others, not so much, but yeah, I really enjoyed it. Then I reread The Lair of the White Worm by Bram Stoker. So Bram Stoker obviously wrote Dracula. The Lair of the White Worm is probably like his second most well-known book. There has been a movie of it and stuff. I will be honest, I enjoyed it more the first time around, but I did enjoy it the second time around as well. I think I found it more troubling in a way because of some of, you know, just his views kind of crept into it and they're kind of anachronistic with our own views today. But I, I thought the story itself still held up. Then I read The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood, which was my favourite book of 2018. Held up still in 2019, and uh, yeah, I possibly will reread it in 2020. I mean, it's one of those books that's still super relevant today, you know? Okay, then I had a few Terry Pratchett ones, so I did Guards, Guards, Men at Arms, and Feet of Clay. I think I did reviews for each of these, so I'll link to those below. I was actually a bit, um, you know... With my, with my in interpretations of the prompts, I took a few liberties, but uh, I think that's allowed, you know. And I'll be doing it again this year, as you will shortly see. But again, I enjoyed all three of those. Um, they're, they're all the City Watch books, which are my favourite sub-series within the Discworld. And so I think each of them were kind of five out of five. And uh, then I read The Subtle Knife by Philip Pullman as well, uh, which is the second book in the His Dark Materials trilogy, which is my favourite trilogy. And yeah, I, I just thought it would be... I used some of the prompts as a good excuse to reread it. However, that's as far as I got, and there were five more that I planned to read. So there was A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness, which uh, unfortunately I DNF'd. I actually, this was for a book that you didn't enjoy much the first time around, and I didn't enjoy it much the first time around. And this time it was even worse because the person narrating the audiobook had like the cheesiest American accent, to the point at which I wonder if they weren't even American and they were just putting on an American accent, you know? So I got about 10 minutes in, and like, I don't really like the book, and I didn't like the narrator either, so I wasn't going to commit to sort of six, seven hours of it. So I DNF'd that one. Uh, I was going to reread some Bukowski as well. I hadn't actually selected which book I was going to do. And um, so, yeah, I'm probably just going to skip that unless I can find like an audiobook of some Bukowski poetry, or maybe Ham on Rye or something. Because what I want to do. I want to catch back up in 2020 of the ones I missed, so there are a few more that I missed. The Amber Spyglass by Philip Pullman, which is the end of the His Dark Materials trilogy, I really want to reread that and finish that off. And then two Stephen King books, so The Stand and The Tommy Knockers. I was going to reread both of those. And again, haven't got to it, but I do plan to in the early part of 2020, and uh, I'll probably be doing reviews for those as well. So now, we're going to move on to the rereads. I'm just going to check, I do still... You see, I don't... I don't, with my video editing software, I don't have a way to add the books onto the screen. And some of these books I no longer have because I've been um, downsizing my collection, basically. So I'm just going to go through and tell you which books I'm going to answer with the prompts. And hopefully you won't mind the fact that they won't be on the screen. So, the prompt for January. Reread a translated book or a book in which a character speaks more than one language. So, I recently read Le Chien de Basqueville, which is The Hound of the Baskervilles in French. So obviously it's translated, and um, yeah, I'm going to give the audiobook a go. It's a lot more difficult, and uh, I could only get just like a random dude reading it as well. Um, so it's not like a big production of it. So I'm a little bit worried because it's difficult. I mean, let me find you some of the audio for it, and you can let me know if you know what is being said. L'œuvre de Schubertillon doit fort impressionner l'esprit de tout homme amoureux de la précision scientifique. Well, he said something about, I think he said, he said less three, which is like the mind. Alors, so, pourquoi ne me consultez-vous pas? 
Pourquoi vous consultez pas? Okay, well that's something like, so why have you consulted me? So I'm gonna go right ahead and say, just from listening to that there, I am gonna struggle to get the full meaning out of this. But I do recognise little words and phrases, so, uh, and I want my listened, listening French to get better, you know, I'm working on it. So that's why I picked that one. February, rediscover a book, one you haven't read in over 10 years and or don't remember very well. So I'm going to reread The Catcher in the Rye by J.G. Salinger. I think I haven't read it since I was 17 or 18, something like that. So yeah, 12, 13 years. For March, reread a book written or set before you were born. So I'm hopefully going to read Travels with My Aunt by Graham Greene. Again, this is all a very tentative list so far because I have to find the audiobooks to be able to do it. But that's certainly the plan anyway. Uh, for April, reread a book from a genre you don't usually read anymore. So this is kind of what I did with the last rereadathon. Uh, comic fantasy. I don't really read any comic fantasy. The only comic fantasy that I read is Terry Pratchett. And I've already read pretty much all of his books, so that doesn't leave, you know, any other comic fantasy for me, really. So I'm going to read Jingo by Terry Pratchett. And again, I'm just continuing the City Watch series. For May, reread a second chance book. Something you DNF'd, something you didn't like, something you had mixed feelings about, etc. So I'm going to put myself through it, and I'm going to reread Persuasion by Jane Austen, in case I enjoy it more by audio. It's not that I didn't enjoy it, it's just it's totally not my book. Like, my kind of writing style, my kind of storyline. So, I don't think I'm... That might be a DNF as well. We'll see. For June, reread a book that made you laugh or inspires a positive emotion. Fifth Elephant by Terry Pratchett. Again, the next Ankh-Morpork Pork City Watch book. July, reread a book that taught you something. A lesson, new fact or insight, etc. So I've picked Haruki Murakami, what I talk about when I talk about running. It actually had quite a profound effect on me. He was talking about how as a writer he wants to keep his mind and body in shape basically to live as long as possible to become the best writer he can be and he kind of discovered this when he was about my age now he actually used to work in a pub and used to smoke heavily and then sort of turned his life around a bit and now he runs marathons all the time so that's you know where it gets its, its title from for September reread a book that was recommended to you or buddy reread a book so this was recommended to me by booktube but I'm also interpreting it a little bit because I read it as a buddy read so uh, and that would be The Martian by Andy Weir and I, again if you want to buddy read The Martian with me in September that would also be cool so let me know October reread a book set in a different country cultural world I'm going to read Night Watch by Terry Pratchett which is set in the disc world and which is the next City Watch book November, reread an underrated book. So I'm using this as an excuse to go with Terry Pratchett again. I'm going for Only You Can Save Mankind, which is the first book in his Johnny Maxwell series. And it was one of my favorites of his actually. It's almost like a YA book. And it's about this young lad uh, called Johnny who's playing this computer game and blowing up aliens. And then suddenly the aliens ask him for his help and he's kind of taken aback because they're not supposed to do that, you know? So uh, yeah, one of my favourites of his, and uh, Jay Shea re recently did a review of it, so I'll link to his review below if you want to hear more of it. Again, I'll probably take notes on the audio as I listen to all of these as well, and um, you know, report back on them. And for December, reread a book that comforted you. So this is weird, but I'm going for Death on the Nile by Agatha Christie, and the reason is, is I just find cosy mysteries very comforting. I was actually talking to my uh, girlfriend about this yesterday or the day before, saying that um, my mum and my gran both read a lot of crime, whereas I read cosy mystery, and I would say that's very different, you know? And so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm going to check that out and see what I think. So yeah, those are how, that, so yeah, that's how I did for Rereadathon 2019, and what I've got planned for Rereadathon 2020. Again, if you want to buddy read any of these books with me as well, let me know in the comments, and I will, uh, you know, I will do my best. I'm going to try and make a bit of a reading schedule, because I've got a... Uh, uh, readathon coming up as well so I need to start like saying I need to read these books at these times and that sort of thing give myself some deadlines but yeah big thanks to Alex Black for keeping this thing alive and uh, yeah Alex I'm sorry that I had a fail for the final five months of 2019 it all just got well it's because I DNF'd um, uh, fucking Patrick Ness and then that kind of put me off rereads for a bit so as I say I'm going to catch up and uh, I've got Lashan de Baskerville for January, and then uh, once I've read that, I'm going to crack on with the others. I might even try to reread some of the others, one or maybe one of them before then. We'll see. I used to actually listen to audiobooks while I was walking, but now I tend to practice my French, so I kind of can't. 
But yeah, that's what I'm going to be reading. So as always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you think of my book choices. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more. And I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.